Hertzman, who until recently was the chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board. Uh, Ms. Hertzman, what has to happen in securing the evidence and determining the cause of this accident? Well, one of the really important things, as you mentioned, is really securing the evidence. The critical pieces of evidence are going to be those black boxes, the cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder, because that will tell the story of many things that occurred in the lead up to this crash. Um, investigators can learn amazing things from those devices uh, about the performance of the aircraft and not just the conversations of the pilots, but sounds that are coming from the aircraft uh, can really tell them the story of what happened. And would the United States help in a case like this? Would, would members of the NTSB be invited in by the Ukrainian government to try to get, get to the bottom of it? Well, I can tell you the good news about aviation is really international aviation tends to know no borders. Um, you have a Boeing aircraft, you have a Malaysian airliner, you have a crash that occurred in the Ukraine. And so it's really important for all of those entities to be able to work together. And they have a structure through the International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICAO, that specifically outlines how countries cooperate in the event of a crash uh, or an accident like this. Um, you know, until it's determined that it's a criminal event, many people are going to want to know what happened to, to identify whether it was an accident or whether something else occurred. How much confidence do you have that at the end of the day, we will know what happened to the aircraft and who is responsible? I, w I, I will say that in the uh, in the history of aviation investigations, they do a really great job, particularly when they have those recorders figuring out what happened. The outliers are Malaysian 370, where you actually have a missing aircraft yeah. or you can't recover those recorders. But um, I, I'm very confident that if you get the right individuals in with the right expertise, that they will figure out what happened. And also, let me ask you, what do investigators have to do on the scene there? What, what would their top priorities be? So I would say for sure they want to identify the debris field, the entire uh, area. And so if you have a closely um, you know, held contained debris field, it's, it's, you know, it's easier to account for all four corners of the aircraft and some of this equipment that's so important, the recorders. But if you have a scattered debris field over several miles, it's really pinpointing where some of the first aircraft parts started coming down, what came down first, what was shedding. You start to see the picture of how the airplane uh, might have been impacted uh, or broken up, depending on what the circumstances were. And so they're going to want to identify all the aircraft parts, whether they're in fields or along roads, um, and then making sure that they have contained all of the evidence and gathered that up. Um, in many, many parts of the world, that is complicated, and you have, you have a loss of significant aircraft parts. Um, but in, in many other parts of the world, you have people calling. They, they, they let officials know. They, they save those parts. And, uh, you know, we've, we've seen it when we had to do recoveries of things like the space shuttle breaking up over multiple states. You really have to track the trajectory of the aircraft and all of the parts that have come off. Over the last hour or so, we've gotten a, a parade of announcements from various airlines saying that after this, they're no longer going to fly over Ukrainian airspace. Are you at all surprised, as many people are, that given the air combat in this region, that commercial airliners were still transiting eastern Ukraine? No, I think we have to really understand what happened in this uh, situation before we reach any conclusions, uh, identify exactly what caused this airplane to crash. But I, I will tell you that I know that commercial airlines uh, take every precaution that they can, those that they're aware of, but it's certainly important when you're looking at fields where there are combats, uh, combat uh, zones, you've got to make sure that you are avoiding those, whether it's uh, circumventing them or uh, altitude restrictions. But um, I know they'll be looking very closely at this, and it's not just not just here, but other, other hot spots around the world where uh, commercial carriers have to pay attention. Deborah Hersman, former chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board, thank you very much for your expertise.